Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT Fly Tying Friday. Today is the 17th of February. John Kreft is going to be tying some streamers, and we hope he'll share some of his adventures in <clears throat> South America. And the weekly tip, well, something's going to get wet. John's going to tell us about that, too. It might have something to do with a can of tuna, and then again, it may not. Welcome. We're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And uh, joining, uh, joining us tonight is John Kreft from Sisters, Oregon. And let me introduce him to you. John Kreft from Sisters, Oregon, pursues his retirement, tying flies, and the many multi-week fishing adventures in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, and last week in South America. He enjoys uh, with his wife, Karen. John is known as a custom tire, selling the flies he knows as well at, at special requests, <clears throat> demonstrating at fly fishing expositions, and his 50 plus years at the vice prompted him to enter the digital world in 2014 with a weekly blog, River Keeper Flies, detailing his fishing, tying, and travel adventures. Be sure to visit www.johncraft.com to find over 300 pattern sheets and information on the numerous Western waters he and Karen have visited. If you are not regular members of his blog, sign up. You'll be glad you did. Also, be sure to check out his River Keeper Flies YouTube channel for more of his fly tying and fishing adventures. Tonight, I give you John Kraft. Thanks, Gret Thanks, Gretchen and Al. So as Al mentioned, I have a website called River Keeper Flies. So I've been doing this since 2014, and it's morphed into a lot of different things, but it's something I enjoy doing. Um, I'll also, at the very end, give you a little teaser about uh, fishing in Patagonia. So I'm a custom fly tire. So the first one I'm going to tie is a Dalai Lama streamer. It's a it's a, uh, a fly that I've tied for a number of years and one that I use frequently. Here's some of them. You can tie them in a variety of colors. I like them in, in olive or green and white for the bull trout that I catch on the Metolius. And some of these bull trout can get pretty darn big. So the many parts of the country bull trout are, are protected and you can't fish for them. But in Oregon here on the Metolius River, we can target them. And one of the best flies for the for bull trout is actually a rainbow trout in the range of 10 to 15 inches. So as you hook and, and play a rainbow trout, bull trout will come over and eat it right off your line. So that's what it looks like when it's wet, but it gets a lot of movement. And uh, it's, as I said, it's my favorite one for, for bull trout. Tonight I'm going to uh, show you, or talk about three different techniques to, in order to finish the head. But to be honest, I don't think the fish care. Uh, I'll show you one that I fish regularly. And if I were going to sell it, I would actually, it's the one on the left. The one in the middle is probably the original uh, tie of the Dalai Lama streamer. And the one on the right, I've just dressed the love up a little bit with just a little bit of dubbing. And that will catch more fly fishers than uh, fish, I think. And this is what we'll tie tonight <clears throat> in the fly pattern sheet. <clears throat> and I'll pause here a second. Uh, if you get your phone out, you can take a picture of this, but also if you use your cell phone and go over that QR code, it will link to my website and the fly pattern sheet on my website. It's just fricking magic, I'll tell you. You should, you should give it a try. Just put your phone up there and it'll automatically do it. It's just magic. Um, but if you go to my website, it'll, I have um, more information about the Dalai Lama streamer. I'll put a hook in the vise. I'm using a 2557, it's just a, a trailing hook. You can use a variety of different manufacturers. This is size four. I'm using a, some 140 denier olive thread. Take a strip of um, olive, wrap it, 
this happens to be from the original fly has got some black barring on it. I like that, but you can use whatever you like. And you notice if you haven't tied with rabbit, all of this goes in one direction. There's two types, there's regular, and then there's a cross cut rabbit, which is cut a different way. And you wanna just get the regular rabbit. So we're gonna use one of these strips. And I want that to extend over the back of the hook a little bit. And in order for me to tie it in, I'm gonna get a little moisture and open this up. <laughs> My goal is not to tie down much of the rabbit strip at all. That looks pretty good. So I'll just, I've got a clear section of the, the leather that's on the rabbit. And I'll stop about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and I'll repeat that process. You can use something sharp just to stick between the uh, the rabbit fur. My scissors works pretty well. And I'll pull this back. So I'll put in the fly line back, you know which is when you should do it. And I just cut off a piece about um, maybe nine, nine inches long or so. And I've just made those so they're fairly even on the, on the back end here. And we'll set that aside and, and do the rest of the fly here, start the rest of the fly. So this is a, a hook. It's a Mustad uh, 34007. I think it's a one aught. And for the, the bead, I've got some um, it's a cone head 3 8 inch. I'll give you a tip. When you put this on, make sure that you uh, rip down that barb because it has a, a tough time going around the hook. Now we're gonna tie this, but at the end of it, I'm gonna clip this off. So it doesn't matter what hook you use. The only thing I'm using really is the shank. Now I'll show you another little tip. In order to keep this out of the way, I attach it to my vise. And then you can pull it however, just whatever distance you want. So I'm just going to start it on the hook and adjust it when I get a few wraps on. Now I want these, I don't want any, any twist in the, uh, in the fly line back in here. So I wanna make sure that those are, are fine. This is going to come over the top and you can just adjust the length of the fly by how far you use this trailing, how you attach the trailing hook. I like about an inch down there. And so I'm gonna leave it on both sides and just carefully with my thread torque, make a kind of a soft wrap so that these, the fly line backing stays on top of the hook. And I'm not pushing it over to the other side. If you use force, you'll push all of this to the other side and it will, it will not ride straight. So that's why I'm trying to make kind of a soft piece on the top 
and then pull down tightly. I'll go up a little bit into the eye or the cone. Now I used to go ahead and, and thread these through the eye of the hook and then come back. But I found that it doesn't make any difference. I don't have a problem with this pulling out with some big fish. You saw that big bull trout. So I'm just going to go back with touching turns, tight touching turns. I hold my fly line backing up at a kind of a 45 degree angle that keeps it directly on top of the hook. And before I get to the end, I'll trim these. And we'll be all set. I'll pull this forward, pull the rabbit forward. I'm gonna moisten my fingers again so I can get a nice clean tie in here. So I'm not pulling tightly on the rabbit. I'm just trying to keep it directly on top of the hook. If you pull too tight, then you'll have the, the fly line backing will actually um, buckle in here. So I wanna, I'd like to keep it. So it's just not taunt, but not loose. So that gives me a nice uh, body and I'll pull it back out of the way and wind my thread right behind the cone. This is where I'll use some super glue, which I, I taught a class last night for the Central Oregon Fly Tires Guild. And I just got this new bottle holder which keeps your Zappa gap from falling over and having the Zappa gap glue your lid to your bottle. And it's a hairline product and your fly shop should be able to find that for you. I'm going to coat the, the body. This does two things. Actually, the, the thread. It adds some extra security to keep the fly line backing taut. But also when I start wrapping, wrapping the the rabbit, it, yeah. it will it will keep that tight as well. So I'm using touching turns here. And I keep pulling the rabbit out so I don't bind any down. And I'm right at the cone head and it will start filling in the cone. Wiggle it a little bit and it will just slide right in. And I'm gonna tie it off right there. Use a little moisture so I can get my rabbit out of the way. Now I will give you one word of caution. When you're tying these flies and you slide your fingers back like this, remember that there's not only one hook, there's two hooks. And if you remember a few weeks ago, or maybe it was even last year where Al all of a sudden had to go get the first aid kit because he punctured his finger and had blood going all over the place. 
I've had that numerous times with this. So I found that my little rubber band trick keeps this trailing hook out of the way a little bit more. And this sucker is very, very sharp, as is this hook right here. So be careful. The next step, I will put in some uh, white rabbit strip. And for that, I'm just going to uh, take the rabbit off and cut this a little bit of an angle. So this, this piece is bare right here. I'll turn my fly upside down. And I will go ahead and tuck this in to the cone. And use your scissor points. You can use a bodkin. Now, I should have told you, if, uh, I kept this on so I could finish the fly in a little bit different way, but you can certainly just cut that off. Here's what your fly will look like. It's a little messy because you can see the thread wraps in here, but that's why I say this, this fly will catch fish. Using the other two methods will catch more fly fishers, but both of them, all of them will catch fish. For the sides, the last piece I add is some lateral scale. This is just some interesting um, man-made materials. It just comes in a hank and you can see that I'm almost out of it. So I'll cut two pieces off. And then I just fold it around my thread, make it even, and just place it right on the side of the fly. There's three wraps there. I'll do exactly the same for the other side. Pull it out of the way, add a little bit extra. And I have found that on occasion when I'm catching fish with this fly, sometimes that will pull out. So I'm just going to use a dab of super glue right in there. Now with this last bit of, of rabbit, I'll make another wrap or so to finish the head. Sometimes you trim it this time, it looks like it's just gonna fit in here. So I just tucked it in again. It was the, the butt end of that rabbit. We'll get ready for a whip finish then. I use a little bit of super glue on here. thread. Got two more steps to do here. The first is to, I'll trim this white. And I want it, would like it to make a cut right where this hook is. I don't want to trim all of the rabbit. I just want to trim the fur, or excuse me, the, the leather piece. So I just 
carefully take my scissors, we'll trim the leather. And you'll notice that the remaining rabbit fibers cover the hook then, but it won't foul the hook. And I'll just trim it at an angle a little bit shorter than what the green, green rabbit is. It folds back and all of that is, is right there. Now we'll remove the, the fly from the vise. And I'll cut this off. Always put your hand over that. that sharp point is going to go somewhere. In this manner, it goes in your hand, but in your eye. So there's the, the cut hook. It'll stay out of the way and you'll end up hooking your fish with this trailing hook. So that's a Dolly Llama streamer. Again, you can tie those in any color you want. I like um, some black and purple. That's been an effective fly for me as well, but you can certainly experiment with a lot of different colors. There we go for a second. So this falls into the category, Al, when he introduced me, said that I tie a variety of flies. And this is a fly that was brand new to me. I'd never heard of it. Uh, somebody, uh, frequently people contact me and ask if I can tie a certain fly. They may even attach a fly pattern sheet to, the, to their email or a link to a YouTube video or something. And this is a customer that lives close, uh, close to me and he fishes in Baja. And he wanted a, a fly that imitated a sardine in the salt. And I had never tied anything like this before in my life. And it really intrigued me. And these are the flies that I ended up selling them. You can tell they've got some different colors to them. You can do them in a variety of colors. And these were the fish he was catching. So if you look carefully, those are my flies in the mouth of those fish. And I just got the biggest kick out of that. So when I talk about durability of flies in a minute as I tie this fly, you'll understand why it's so important. Because these, these fish are big and strong and have teeth. This is one that I'll tie tonight. It'll be uh, an olive, olive and white. Um, but I'll show you some examples. I've got the other examples here that um, are more of a sardine color. Again, here's the fly pattern sheet. And there's a QR code for you. And give me just a second and I'm gonna move some materials around. This one is a messy fly, I'll tell you that. What I've been doing is uh, laying out a variety of materials that I'm going to tie on the fly. And I found if I lay those in advance, it makes tying the fly that much easier. This is a kamikatsu. Uh, you could also use the, the other hook that I just had, which is a Mustad 34007. But if you're gonna tie anything in for the salt water, you want a, a hook that is built for salt water. And the reason is with the, if the fish gets these and nicks it, it will rust. And when you spend as much um, time and money buying the materials for this fly, for thread, I'm just using some monofilament. So you can buy this, uh, I think it's 0 0.006. And this is the fly we're going to tie. So it does look like a bait fish with his eyes. And I'll start the, we call it thread, but it's mono. 
is you need to have very sparse materials. And you'll see as I fold materials back in order to create the body. But I want to uh, separate this into thirds visually. So from, I'm gonna start with a tail and all of, all of the materials I'll be using sculpt the fly. And if you haven't seen EP fibers, this is what it looks like. It's just a hank. And see this little point right here? I added that. So when you when you pull it out of a package, it just looks like this on both ends. And if you pull it out and you pull a few fibers back, there is no way in the world you're gonna get it back into this plastic container. And so what I did to solve that little problem was just to get a zip tie. And as you pull it out of the package, just put a zip tie around it and that will keep it all in place and then you can manage it. So all the materials that I showed you, what I did was to pull some fibers out like this. And you see how sparse that is. And this is the whole hank. And you want to, with each of these steps, you want to tie in a sparse amount. And it will become obvious in a moment. So that was, um, this happens to, the first color is uh, sculpin color. And here's a hank that I pulled out. And I want to tie it about in half. I want to keep, make sure that those are on top of the hook. And I'll turn it over. EP fibers is the color is bait fish, bait fish belly. It has a little bit of flat. Again, it's a whole length of hank. And I'll tie that in, making sure that those fibers are all on the bottom of the hook. And I'm tying backwards now to the tie in point of the first one. Now the trick is not to make, not to mix those feathers together or those uh, materials together. I'll fold them back, take it out of my vise. And what I'll do is try to manage so I get half of the material on each side of the hook. So that's the reason why I take it out of the vise. You can see I just kind of comb it back and that starts to be the shape of the fish. So you can see where my tie-in point was. My thread is at the back and I'll go forward. Now remember I told you that I was uh, working in thirds, so I've gone forward a little bit. And I'm going to use a different color just because I wanted to try it. It is the same technique. That happened to be some picture. Again, it's some 3D fibers, but its color is golden olive. I'll use another section of bait fish belly, the whole size, trying to get it evenly distributed.
you can see you, um, the reason I show this is that you can use your imagination to put whatever lines you want in the fish, in these, in these bait fish with different colors. So the next section we're going to tie um, the colors that I've chosen for the rest of this are just the, the sculpting color. So that was the original color. But this is half of the section. So rather, I had the whole hank, and I just cut them in half. And I'm going to bring it around the bottom of the hook, make sure that's equal, and then wrap it. And the reason I'm doing that is to create bulk. So you can see how with how it's tied in that manner, it's adding bulk on the side of the fly. If you were to continue in the first method that I had, you would have um, a very narrow fly, which if that's what you're after, that's fine. But this technique um, creates bulk on the side. I'm using the bait fish belly again. We're just going to repeat this whole process. And move forward. Remember, I'm in my second two thirds. And as you do this, watch out for that hook point, or else you're going to go to Al's class. I'll repeat the process again, same materials. Make sure it's on the underside. And you can see how much bulk it is on the side now. The last step then, the last third, we're going to repeat kind of the initial, the initial wave. So I want this on top and I want to move this around it just a tiny bit. I've gone back, we'll Repeat that process for the bottom. Again, this is a half of a hank. And repeat this one last time. And now I'm just going to wrap. Okay. I need to trim any different fibers. We'll trim this and then immediately put on some UV resin. So this is a this is a little finger brush that I got from Hairline as well, and now I'm going to trim the fly, but I'll comb all of that out. I'm 
take it out of the vise. And I'll start a trimming process here. I told you it's a messy option here. And rather than fly tying scissors, I'm using some big discars. So I want to trim this in the shape of a fish. So I'll take, take my brush and all those short fibers that I had, I'll start creating a head. I will tell you that if you get carried, it's easy to get carried away and the only thing you have remaining is a hook. So be careful when you start trimming. You can always trim more. I'll trim a little bit at a time, pull the, the head fibers out. And then for the tail, You can spend more time trimming it if you like, but I'm just gonna stop there for, for tonight. I'll trim these small fibers because I'm gonna, I'll, that'll be, you'll see why in a moment. Okay. Next step is add some eyes. You'll see in my example here, I've got a variety of eyes you can use. Here's a smaller uh, bait fish like the sardine that I, that I tied for that for my customer. But you notice the different size of eyes and the different shapes of eyes as well. So there's a ton of different ones that you can choose from. I will be putting on some holographic uh, pearl eyes tonight. And they come stuck on a, and looks like the paper didn't come off. I'll use that on a different flight. Oh, maybe. There we go. Now, if you were just to stick those on, they probably wouldn't stay very long. So I'll be using some Zap gel. I'll take a big gob, put it on my bodkin. Put it on one of the eyes and it just sticks. And you can adjust and make sure they're in the same place. And those will stick pretty well.
Well, the other part of my process was to create, as I'm creating um, bulk for this fly, my customer wanted to make sure that, um, that when he's stripping it through the water, that the head of the fly actually pushes the water as it swims. And so I was trying to create some bulk in the, in the head area. And I'll be using some solar, solar res, solar res um, flex, some UV resin. And this one, I, I use quite a bit of it. creates a hardness once it sets that will push more water out of the way and attract these bigger fish to the fly. Let's check if that's where I want it. And we'll set the UV resin. And I was amazed when I got this flex resin. I'll, I'll uh, show you how it, how it uh, reacts here in one second. And then I take my last uh, UV resin just to put in the eyeball to make sure that it's shiny. And then you can squeeze that and it's almost like rubber, which is pretty amazing because it's soft, but it also provides some bulk in order to manage, um, or not manage, but to create the ability for this fly to push some water a little bit and make, um, get some of the fish's attention. So that's uh, my version of an EP bait fish fly. You can just tie them in a lot of different colors. And uh, if you look at the EP fiber charts, there are so many different colors. It's just really amazing. Okay, and to, now for the weekly tip. One of the things that we normally do, but tonight we're going to have John Kareff actually take the uh, bull by the horns, if you will. And he's going to give us the weekly tip. I've been just dying all week to know what a can of tuna yeah. is for all this. <laughs> so I mentioned already um, on the first fly, using some moisture in order to manage uh, manage all your your rabbit hair. And this kind of started when I was tying a bunch of uh, woolly buggers and some steelhead flies that use a lot of marabou. And I'm sure you've all done this where you, you need some moisture. So you come up here to your mouth, lick, lick your finger and come back and do that. Well, I was tying flies that had, that were black marabou and I didn't think anything of it. And I finished and I walked over and my wife says, why do you have black all over your mouth? And it was the dye from the marabou. So I'm sure that hasn't ever happened to any of you. But since then, I decided that I would use a different method. And I don't use it all the time. I still go to my mouth occasionally. But I ended up with a can of tuna fish, opened it, and got a sponge. You get it wet. You stick it in there. And you just use this. Then it's moist. And that works really well. If you're going to tie you tomorrow night, this is going to dry out and you just have to go over to the faucet and reapply some water. Well, I found this tip from Kelly Gallup. And someone had sent this idea to him. This is just a fly container that has a cap on it. I cut a sponge that fits right into the, the cap or in, into the cup. And then when you're done, you just close it up and it's still moist. 
And the only thing I find that if uh, tomorrow, if I'm going to use this, I probably have to turn it over because all the water gravity has pulled it down to the bottom. So the bottom is usually always a little more damp than the top, which is I just changed over. So it's, but that's my tip, Al. In the sharing section. But anyway, that finishes everything on the tip. We are headed now to the sharing on BT's fly uh, tying Friday. And uh, this is a new event. We don't know exactly how this is going to work out. But rather than us sharing with all of you, all of you are going to be sharing with us. And tonight, we're going to have start with John Kraft. And he's going to tell us about Argentina. So Karen and I were fortunate enough to go to uh, Argentina, and we just returned a week ago. The reason that uh, we've been to our, we've been to Chile, so Patagonia on the other side, but this is on the eastern side of the Andes. And what really intrigued us was it was fishing from helicopters. And each morning around nine o'clock, we would get in a helicopter, fly to our location get out and fish, stop between four and five o'clock and fly back to the lodge. And there was one section that we fished and I asked our, our head guide, Danny, how, how long it would take for us to drive that or fish the location we were in. And he said, well, it'd probably be a three and a half hour drive, a 45 minute walk. And we got there in nine minutes. And it was phenomenal. Um, the experience, um, actually, I'm just finishing up a blog post that I'll have on my Riverkeeper Flies website next week about Argentina. But uh, this is rather unique for us. And we would just, they would put down right next to the river. It was truly one of the most amazing things, experiences that, that we've had. And here's just a couple of shots, uh, one of Karen fishing with a guide, and then a view that we had, a bird's eye view, every day as we would fly from one location to the other. So that's just a quick a quick sharing now of, um, of our experience. So a little more detail. We flew down, we flew from Portland to Atlanta, Atlanta to Buenos Aires, stayed there a night, flew to San Martin, and then a three and a half hour drive north to Lankopu, where the airport was for the helicopter to pick us up. And about a 20 minute flight, which was 50 miles uh, away from the airport. We were there for a week. Uh, set, set Fly Fishing has several lodges and experiences in Argentina. Three of them, at least three of them are trout. There's one for Dorado. But that's what my blog's going to be out about this this next week about the experience that we had, about the people that were at the lodge, the people who who served us, uh, took took care of us. But it's just one of one of the best experiences we've we've had. Thank you, John. And before we go to the final sharing of the evening with Evelyn, um, I wanted to talk about a, a surprise from David Buckner. And I found a kindred soul in him that he must uh, have a lot of nightmares because, well, you ever seen a fly like this? A frog with his tongue out catching a fly? I know that had to have been dreamed up at three o'clock in the morning staring at the ceiling with nothing else to do. <laughs> and then to top it off, Valentine's Day. This shows up in the email. Now, if this was meant for me, I'm worried. If it was meant for my wife, I'm even more worried. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wanted to spotlight David Buckner for a minute and let him talk to us about. It was interesting that that uh, the frog fly sent a buddy of mine, a, a uh, deer hair frog that I, I tied. And shortly after that, I seen some pictures of dry flies. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, a frog eating fly. And it just, it put the thought in my mind. And um, yeah, I couldn't wait to get up the next morning to, to tie that guy. It was a lot of fun. That's a, that's a size 30. 
um, dry fly on the front there. <laughs> and on the on the Valentine's fly, I just I like to tie holiday flies and um, just thought about a, a heart, deer hair heart. <clears throat> and that's what that is. Love it. Well, that's just about as cool as I've as I seen. Anything else on this, David? No, sir. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Well, there's a there's a young lady that we just absolutely enjoy sharing her artwork with all of you. <laughs> and Evelyn, it's all yours. Show us what you got. Okay. Here's the Dalai Lama streamer. Love it. Beautiful. And the thing is, I start off with doing the hooks and then start going piece <clears> by <throat> piece. And of course, it gets lost sometimes. And there are pieces in there that don't belong there, as you will see. And this one is the uh, EP fish bait. And see what it says, cut on dotted lines. So when you're done tying, you have there. <laughs> Okay. I love that. I love that. Okay, and that's it for this week. Uh, we sure enjoyed having you all join us. I hope you like the new feature called sharing. But for now and this week, that's a wrap. We'll see you next week.